Welcome everyone to Thoughts on Thursdays. This is season two, episode four, and today we're going to be discussing entrepreneurship and hospitality. And we're really going to be asking the question around, is entrepreneurship a skill that we need to have more of in hospitality? As we think about the creativity and innovation that the industry needs next, is it time to start your own journey? Is it time to bring new skills to your work in a hotel chain or a tech business or an ownership group? Um, so without further ado, Sophia, over to you. Okay, so I'm Sophia. I'm originally from Colombia. Um, so a little bit about my background. So I'm the founder and avo lover of Toasty. That's my official uh, job title. <laughs> I gave it to myself. And so I, my background, I studied event management in the Sino-British College in Shanghai, in China. I was there for like six years. And then I went to La Roche in Switzerland, where I did my MBA in hospitality. I graduated in 2014. After that, I went back to Shanghai where I did a management training with the Intercontinental Hotel Group for six months. And that's when I realized hotels were not my cup of tea. So I moved into events and PR where I was there a project management and an agency for almost two years. Then I decided it was time to come west. So I moved to San Francisco where my family is based and I started Toasty. So my main takes up like from starting my business was like one, you need to create a system that runs your business. It would really help you like understand how everything works, control your costs. And also once you have like new employees, you can also train them uh, really easily because you basically hand them in like a, a manual. Then you have to create a culture about caring. I realized like you cannot really pay people to care, but you have to like kind of create that culture where like you care about things and they also care about it. They care about you, they care about your customers and they care about your product. And then they can follow the system that you already created. And one thing that is like really important is that you have to work on your business and not in your business. If you stay all the time in operations, your business is never gonna grow because you need to go out there and sit down and think like, okay, what's our next step? So yeah, so once you have a system, once you have a brand, once you have a team that can run the business, you have like a model that can be easily replicated. And that's kind of our plan. We, we're we thinking about franchising now and ideally bringing Toasty to your hometown. <laughs> and yeah, and then I just want to finish with this quote that is like every person in their lifetime has had a billion dollar idea. And it's true, we all have like great ideas. We just need to start executing our ideas and just focus on, what we think it's like the best idea and redirect all our energy into that. So now I pass it over to Mayor. Thanks, Sophia. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Mayor. Um, I am a self-titled hospitality entrepreneur. Um, basically, I'm from Turkey, and then I, my life story goes. I went to the U.S. to study industrial engineering and also did a minor in innovation and digital entrepreneurship. And so I want to talk about some trends going back into like the hospitality industry and like what it's what entrepreneurship is right now in my mind in hospitality and like what I see is happening in the market. I've been like I follow a bunch of people on LinkedIn, like talk and like meet a lot of people, and I'm excited about like new products. And I think. As you all know, like we're all working remote, we're all doing digital meetings and the, rem the future of like digital nomads is now like, of course it's been growing and on, on the works for many years. We've been talking about co-living for over like five, 10 years now in the industry, but now like it's suddenly pushed super forward. And there's this idea of people traveling and, um, kind of staying at places for longer stays and like a mixture between housing and hospitality like there's this term housing as a service hospitality where like you go on a weekend trip or you can like do a staycation but I think there will be and there is people working on this there will be successful companies who work on building communities work on kind of empowering people on where um how they live and like creating atmospheres for growth which is essentially like what a good experience hospitality experience in my mind should be about like I so lastly i want to talk about like of course anyone like major form of entrepreneurship entrepreneurship here would be like starting your own space starting your hotel but i am more interested in the 
digital side and like kind of enabling these hospitality services to kind of happen. So um, I want to talk about like distribution first. Right now with the pandemic happening, it's really hard for people to get customers, occupancies at the prices that they desire. So there are a lot of like helper products that kind of allow people to increase website traffic and like segment and personalize the product that they're offering. So the um, basically getting the customer and like anything that companies can do to help um, like spaces get customers, I think is gonna be more and more important, especially with the pandemic, like OTA traffic is not enough. So any creative solution there is, would be great. And Perfect. Thanks, Mia. That's fab. That's, that's awesome. So I've got a couple of uh, questions. People have been pinging me privately, and I see Carla's got a question too. I, I, I'll, I'll just quickly kick off. Um, it's a question for Sophia, actually. So from kind of concept and idea through to your first store opening, could you just briefly describe that process you went through kind of, and how long it took? Like, I guess, how did you kind of test your idea, get your hypothesis up and running before you kind of, you know, went, went all in? So honestly, I didn't really have like a, a clear plan. I just kind of moved to California. I noticed like a lot of places were serving avocado toast. And I was like, oh, but they don't have like toppings anywhere. You know, you could only add like salmon or only add an egg. So I was like, oh, what if I make like the home of avocado toast? So that was kind of like the focus. And I decided from the beginning to do a concept that is really simple. That what I said again, that it can multiply really easily. But also I feel like when you're like really into a niche, like really specific product, um, you become more like people know you for something, you know, people know us for avocado toast. Like if you search for avocado toast in San Francisco, like we're there first, like on all the search engines. So yeah, so to go back to the question, <laughs> it took me about like three months, which is not like really long. It was like, a, like I had like the idea, since it's a simple idea, like pretty simple. I wanted my logo to be an avocado. I needed a name. So I'm like, oh, I'm thinking about a name. And I know my boyfriend said, what about Toasty? And I was like, Toasty, mm, I'm not sure. And then I couldn't think about anything better. But now I like it. It's kind of cute and short. Um, Hibram, you had a good question here. Can we go ahead? Yes. First of all, how are all of you? I hope all of you are well. Yeah, I had a question regarding the, the avocado toast uh, uh, business model. Understanding the pandemic and, and now you can't have uh, people in in dining there in your restaurant. I would just like to know if, if there's a focus right now on the, on the delivery trend and understanding that on some markets now, uh, there there have been ghost kitchens and 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 on specific points that are only for delivery. So I just wanted to ask Sophia, like, what's your your take on this? Uh, yeah. So I mean, luckily, San Francisco never shut down the restaurants. We were always open for takeout and delivery. We were like since the start. We were always on all the delivery platforms. I mean, all most of these companies are from here, right? Uber Eats, Postmates, Caviar, DoorDash. Like we're on all of them. And we definitely, like, that's what helped us survive through this. Like, we got, we saw, like, a spike of, like, I don't know, 500% on deliveries. Yeah, and... no, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Um, Lars, you had a, a question. Do you, do you want to go ahead? Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for, for sharing, obviously, Mir and uh, Sophia. It's always great to see practical cases and stories. Um, I, had a, I had a question. Have you found any specific digital tools, softwares, programs, application very helpful to to keep track on, on how in your startup things are processing, if somebody is doing their support job, bringing people back together. Um, yeah, just some best practices with a, with a name on it. Let's put it this way. I mean, in my experience, Slack is one of the major tools. I mean, everyone is kind of on that in the startup world. It's like a major um, fast communication platform at at Sonder we were using Asana I don't know if you're like it's if you've heard of the product but it's a task management kind of software where you can build processes you can like send um tasks to each other so yeah I, I I completely agree I think I think with kind of video calling somewhere to communicate like a slack and then somewhere to manage what who's doing what we use monday.com which is exactly the same as Asana essentially quickly create tasks you can prioritize size right there you can kind of set due dates and tag people yeah so um kind of a couple of questions that come through here 
do you think the hospitality is entrepreneurial enough? <laughs> kind of part one. Part two is, do you think you can teach it? Do you think we could, the industry could get better? I mean, I don't know. Like me personally, I don't feel like you can teach it. You can teach like people like basic things like like how to create models, how to manage a team. But then in, in real life, you, you learn everything kind of like on the go, especially like nobody teaches you at school how to be anyone's boss. Mm. <laughs> So then like, it's also like a learning process that part, like how to manage a team, how to act like the boss without feeling like you're the bad cop <laughs> yeah. of the story. So it's, I think it's, it's more like on the go. And I feel like it's, some people are built for it. Like I've talked to a lot of people who just want to have a job and they're okay with that. And they have 21 days off. And sometimes I want to be like those people because I feel like I'm, you're never really off, off, right? You're always in the back of your mind thinking about it, but I feel it's more like a, personality type yeah okay. i have a question uh, james yeah go for it yeah of course cool, Angela. i just put on the on the on the group chat but mm -hmm. i was a little bit um, uh, interesting about the emotional side because you know to become an entrepreneur in a way as i wrote you take a sort of a leap of faith on uh, to become an um, entrepreneur at the same time obviously you're gonna have your analysis and your business uh, your core business uh, nice and sorted but that emotional side to say, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do that. How do you, how do you handle that? I mean, I guess, I mean, yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I guess, I guess part of that is probably the situation you're in. Right. And actually, um, do you feel like you've got enough financial runway in terms of money in the bank to try something new um, to buy yourself time? So a couple of thoughts. I know a lot of people start things as a bit of a side project, which means you can test the water while you've got the security of your, your job and your, um, and, your, and your set holiday. Um, but the other insight, which I think kind of throws up is now is probably a better time than ever. And I think you're going to see a lot of people moving on into the entrepreneurship space because potentially people aren't earning as much as they were before. Um, Laura, you had a really good question, I think, around talent. Great to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Um, I'm just wondering, is there do you see like a division between there's the hospitality entrepreneurs that may not be coming from hospitality school or a background and then there's the the five star kind of management training programs where you've got to have all the experience is there a division do you see do you Sonder did you you know I think quite a few people have hospitality backgrounds and they've switched um but do you kind of come to blocks or uh do you kind of find that oh we, we're, we're lacking this knowledge now and, and I, we wish there was more merge between the two how do you see this? And that's a great question because something that we struggled with at Sonder actually was like the hiring policy was not around hiring hospitality. People like I don't have a, I mean, I worked in hospitality, but like did not study it. And basically 95% of the company or even more was that way. Like people like Sonder wanted to push their hiring for to hire people from like non-hospitality, more like agile kind of um backgrounds i mean that there is the notion of if you go to like hospitality school does not necessarily train you to be entrepreneurial which i think is like a hole that has to be fixed that was what sandra taught but so um last question for you um what are your expectations for the future of the industry just kind of quick comment on i suppose the space you play in like what what do you think might unfold in the next year or two um, it's a pretty broad question, but I'd love to kind of get, get a bit of a crystal ball going with the two of you. Yeah, I mean, in the hospital, like vacation rental slash hotel space, I think, um, I think like anything that caters to digital nomads on like the property size and creates unique personalized experiences and can find the right people will get ahead of the game. And you have to do this in a cost effective way, obviously you're um you are um your competition is like sonder or other like vacation rentals or hotels that are running quite leanly so i think like space wise there is a big opportunity there yeah awesome thanks man sophia final thoughts um yeah well definitely delivery apps are you know gonna grow more also like a lot of technology in restaurants like we ourselves we also have like a self-ordering kiosk we don't come close to our customer they take their order they can customize everything we have qr codes at the table where people can order from their phones 
So definitely applying more like technological solutions to the whole operation. As ever, thanks everyone for your contribution and attendance and attention. That's been great. Um, Mira and Sophia, it's been awesome to have you co-host with me. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, we will see you next week, five o'clock UK time, 12 o'clock Eastern time and do it all again. So I look forward to catching you then. Thanks so much for your time, everyone. Have a Thank great weekend. You. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.